I'm uh, really excited uh, to be welcoming and introducing uh, Robert Leshner to you today. Um, for those of you who don't know Robert, um, he is the CEO and co-founder of Compound Labs. Uh, Compound, of course, is the um, decentralized uh, lending platform uh, running on Ethereum, uh, which is frequently on the top of the DeFi list uh, as of late. I believe uh, recently it had over $15 billion worth of assets earning interest, uh, which is obviously truly, truly massive. Um, and, you know, more recently, Compound Labs shared that they're working on Compound Chain, uh, a new evolution of their platform. And we were really, really excited to see Cello mentioned in the announcement. Uh, and so I am really looking forward to this talk. And so with that, I'm going to hand it over to, Walt, uh, to Robert and uh, welcome again. Thanks, Marek. Excited to be here. So today I'm going to talk about how Compound Chain uh, which is being called Gateway, uh, scales the compound ecosystem to a multi-chain world. Uh, and I'll start by really walking through um, the basics of, you know, why DeFi is existing on Ethereum. Um, so first, you know, Ethereum has really taken the foreground as the foundation of DeFi. Um, one, because it had an early mover advantage, but two, because there's a network effect that's evolved over time. So on top of this computation platform, you have all sorts of applications and you have all sorts of assets. And the important thing is that the assets are issued on this platform um, and the applications are able to interact with these assets that exist on this blockchain. And if you've heard a phrase called composability, this basically means that any application can talk to any other application and be built on top of it, built, built alongside it. And it creates this rich web of uh, activity. This is why DeFi is such an exciting concept. Um, you have each application making every other application on the network stronger uh, and more interesting and more useful. And you can see that most applications today are built on Ethereum. This is DeFi Pulse. Um, obviously, there's lots of applications that aren't included, but like for the most part, you know, there's been hundreds of applications that have evolved over time uh, on top of this one foundation. But this leads to its own issues. So right now, a lot of people are talking about, you know, the gas costs and scalability issues of Ethereum um, as there's more applications and more activity trying to really fit into one ecosystem. The cost of interacting with it goes up. Right. And so you can hear this popular refrain that like Ethereum has gotten extremely expensive. And this is true. And it's a function of huge amounts of usage and transaction volumes. And so this is really, you know, over the last you know, year or two set off uh, in a lot of ways, this search by users um, and developers for other platforms on which to build. And, you know, what we started to see is lots of different layer one chains starting to enter the picture in one way or another, some successfully, some not yet successful, um, you know, with a lot of experimentation to create new platforms for decentralized financial applications. Um, you know, over the last like six months, we've started to see a, a very rapidly increasing amount of both assets and DeFi applications start to appear on other chains. And for the most part, you know, these ecosystems follow, you know, a very straightforward architecture, which is each one is, you know, a computation platform with its own assets and with its own applications. Um, and in a lot of ways, these are like islands. Um, you know, these are, you know, fun islands. You know, there's a lot of like great assets and great applications on something like Binance Smart Chain. Uh, but in general, these, you know, systems don't really talk to each other yet. Um, it's relatively hard to go from, you know, Binance Smart Chain to Cello, you know, or Cosmos. And what we're seeing is these independent ecosystems starting to emerge um, with their own computation, assets, and applications. And, you know, this trend is going to continue to increase as a function of, you know, the natural um, spirit of innovation and experimentation. Um, we're seeing developers, you know, building new applications and new assets, frequently not on Ethereum. And so we're starting to see this fragmentation across blockchains, but one in which each of these blockchains is still relatively siloed from the others. Now, let me talk about Compound really quickly, and I'll start to put all of this in perspective. So Compound is an interest rate market where assets currently from one blockchain 
um, can be used as collateral to borrow other assets from that blockchain. So Compound today has about uh, $15.3 billion of assets um, as collateral in the system, and there's about $6.3 billion of assets borrowed from Compound right now. And this comprises the most popular Ethereum uh, assets. So we have Ether, we have Wrapped Bitcoin, we have US Dollar Coin, we have Dai, we have Tether, we have a bunch of Ethereum tokens. And these assets are all you know, useful to earn interest on, and they're all useful as collateral to borrow other Ethereum assets. So when you think about the last slide, you know, we're really looking at one little island here um, of assets, right? Ethereum. And Compound supports Ethereum assets. Um, it does so incredibly well. It's been an application that's you know scaled over time from a million dollars of assets to now fifteen billion dollars of assets, but it supports a very limited use case under the backdrop of obviously usage expanding for, away from Ethereum and onto other chains. Now, from a macro you know perspective, there's a couple different choices for how the overall ecosystem can evolve. So, in approach one. You know, we or the community or different communities could deploy a, a compound on each blockchain. So imagine this as there could be a compound deployed on Ethereum, which there already is. There could be a compound deployed on Celo. There could be a compound deployed on Polkadot. There could be a compound deployed on Solana. There could be a compound deployed on, you get the idea, right? And in this approach, you have a subset of assets in their own compound. So on Celo, you might have, you know, the Celo dollar and the Celo, you know, token. You might have a couple other tokens that exist, you know, there. And you could have an interest rate market where any of these tokens can borrow any of these other tokens. But it'll be a contained ecosystem um, of limited utility. And the more assets that can be consolidated into one market where they're useful collateral for any other asset, you actually get an exponential or semi-exponential increase in utility per asset. The marginal utility of each asset increases as a function of how many other assets it can enter a compound with. So in the first approach to the world, you deploy a compound on every single blockchain, right? In an entirely alternate approach, you have a single compound or interest rate market that exists across blockchains. And this is really the goal that we're undertaking with Gateway, um, which was based on a white paper called Compound Chain, uh, is to create a compound across each chain. So one compound that spans Celo and Ethereum and Polkadot and Solana, for instance, and creates one overarching market. And you know the way we think about this is it's a distributed ledger for cross-chain interest rate markets. So you know, the functionality of Compound, but with not just Ethereum assets, with every type of asset. And here's the architecture of how it works in practice. So you have many different blockchains, all of which are computational platforms. On top of each blockchain, there's a contract called a starport. This is basically like a bonding contract. And, you know, a user with their own wallet, you know, a wallet native to Ethereum, a wallet native to Cello, a wallet native to Solana, or a wallet native to Polkadot, can interact with uh, one of these starport contracts and supply assets to it. And when they do, their balance is added and represented to Compound Gateway, which is a cross-chain interest rate market. And once an asset's in Gateway, a user can then borrow assets or download them onto any other blockchain. So I could supply an Ethereum asset earn interest on it. I could supply a cello asset, earn interest on it. And I could use any of these assets that I've supplied to borrow assets native to any blockchain. So I could download, you know, um, cello dollars on cello, having supplied, you know, Uniswap tokens from Ethereum. And it creates this infinite permutation and increase in utility for each of the blockchains. So, what we're doing is we're building one overarching interest rate market with contracts deployed locally on each blockchain. And Compound Gateway is its own ledger. Some people call this a side chain. Um, some people call this an L2. You know, we simply call it you know, a cross-chain interest rate market because that's what it is in practice. And it has its own validators. Um, there's some interesting, you know, governance applications here, but it basically has its own, you know, validators, which look like miners um, that enforce this ledger. 
And the end result is that we're going to take you know, a system like Compound that has $15 billion of Ethereum assets and build a much larger ecosystem that spans Celo, you know, and Ethereum and Polkadot and Solana and any different blockchain that emerges over time. Um, it can grow over time to include ledgers that don't exist yet. Right. It can include ledgers that are, you know, semi-centralized. It can include a bank ledger. Um, there's a lot of different, you know, interoperability that's going to emerge. And, you know, to summarize it, you know, it really is allowing you to take assets from any chain, you know, with the wallet native to that chain and borrow an asset on any other chain. It's a tool to cross blockchains but do so without having to trade, without having to, you know, wrap assets, without having to go through an exchange or a centralized, you know, party. You know, this is a tool that's going to build bridges between Ethereum and other blockchains. Um, and you're going to be able to do so essentially on credit. You know, if you have one asset, you have free reign to take an asset native onto another blockchain. Um, hopefully, you know, as this starts to emerge, we're actually going to see this facilitate new types of decentralized finance applications on each chain. Um, you know, we expect and anticipate that this is one going to, you know, use the functionality that Compound, you know, users are familiar with, but also it's going to create entirely new experiences that we can't foresee. And so all of this right now is running on a gateway testnet. Um, you know, it's been running for a couple of weeks now. You can test this with one blockchain compound, but we're really looking forward to building Starports um, on many different blockchains. And this is an activity that's actually open to developers from all of these communities. So the Celo ecosystem can help us build a Starport on Celo. The Polkadot ecosystem can help us build a Starport on Polkadot. And over time, it's going to create you know, much more of a web of DeFi um, for all of the integrated Starports. And so this is Gateway. Um, it's, you know, a cross-chain interest rate market. Right now, you know, it's being built starting with Ethereum, but it's going to scale to many different um, assets across many different blockchains. It's amazing. Thank you, Robert. Um, yeah, that's... Um... I'm really, really excited for the potential of this. I think I um, personally really love the insight around just the massive increase in utility of kind of the lending markets by kind of allowing this lending across all of these different chains. So really, really looking forward to this. Um, I have a question. When is mainnet? Uh, the obvious question. Yeah, great question. Um, so right now things are on testnet and starting to run extremely smoothly. There's lots of community validators that are participating in this testnet. If I had to guess, you know, it's probably something like, you know, early Q3. Um, and it's really a function of, you know, when the community is ready. But, you know, I think it's, um, you know, probably two to three months away. That's awesome. Great. Well, it looks like we're at time. So I will hand it back to our MCs.